Hello and welcome to the Stream of Chaos. My name is Dave and I will be your Keeper of Arcane Lore for this session of Call of Cthulhu. Uh, today we are continuing our playthrough of Hoist Regency Cthulhu. Uh, this is going to be session three of the Long Corridor. Uh, and uh, you can get your own copy of this book from chaosium.com. Uh, you can find all of our VODs collected over on the Chaosium YouTube channel, so that's where this will go shortly. And if you are watching there and you'd like to join us live, we do stream each week Fridays at 3pm Pacific. That's pinned to 10am Australian. Uh, I want to give a thank you to Roll20 and Sirenscape for being tools which we use to improve our games. And I also want to say that still ongoing is of course the Graveyards of Arkham, so definitely make sure you're checking that out. Uh, it's been going on the Twitch channel on... Gosh, it's Thursdays Australian, so that means it's Wednesday evenings, I think, uh, in the States. So that's happening on the Twitch channel, and those will all be saved for posterity over on our YouTube. So you can check all of those out there, as well as the previous series, Bookshops. Um, all right, without further ado, let's return to our cast here and the scenario at hand. So we are back in the Regency era. Our uh, investigators are all attending this very well-to-do summer ball. Had a chance to... Uh, speak with some of the guests, develop a little bit of your reputations, and also investigate this strange extending corridor that seems to be structurally impossible. Uh, you've uh, spent a couple sessions looking around, meeting some people and doing some this and that, and we finished our last session as a scream erupts from uh, the direction of the library where a few of you left only recently. Our four investigators all whirl about and uh, the other NPCs are reacting as well and people begin to head that way. Uh, we'll do a little hurdle around the room and reintroduce all of our characters in the context of what were you doing most recently? You hear this scream and as you swing about, what do we see? Uh, Art, why don't you begin first? Hello, good, more, uh, good time zone. Happy time zone. There we go. I remember the <laughs> thing. Uh, I'm Arch, uh, and I'm playing the good uh, Reverend Samuel Jennings, um, who would like to remind you that in the eyes of God, nothing is impossible, just highly, highly improbable. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think God said that. I think that might have been a scientist, but sh <laughs> I, Or maybe Willy Wonka. Okay. I genuinely can't remember. <laughs> um, I frankly don't remember where my character was situated the you were playing you were playing think... cards and distracting right. them so I that miss georgiana playing. could inspect the long corridor corridor yeah uh well in that case did the scream come from the corridor or no, does the, the scream library. come from the library thank you uh yeah i think um that would be uh is probably the fastest and maybe the most like competently the good reverend has moved this entire evening <laughs> uh, <laughs> is like a sudden stand with a hand on the back of the chair to pivot around to look in the direction of the library with a with a look of of uh concern um and you know a momentary beat before he goes to move in a direction just in case there's someone yelling something because getting more information before going into a potentially stressful or, or difficult situation is is the way to go about Very it sensible. um i suspect it's probably not the first time that this that this gentleman has been somewhere where someone has yelled in some kind of distress um you know uh, healthcare and midwifery being what it is uh I, I suspect he's been around for for a few different things maybe not directly involved because you know that would that would be uncouth but definitely like in the vicinity and assisting the family probably the gentleman in question more than anything else yeah. um you know uh but yes i, I think he his demeanor is one of of someone who is like ah oh, this is a crisis situation I actually kind of know what to do in a crisis situation. Um, I, I'm not terrified. I am concerned. Yeah, and I mean, it's also worth knowing, I mean, the, the four of you have seen some unnerving things so far, but it's all just sort of stuff that's raised the hackles a little bit. It's not been overtly terrible. This is sort of, you know, the, this could feel like the ramifications of something that was started earlier and so already on edge stand up quickly, no whirl around. Is... 
And you will also see no as you look yet. down the corridor, Miss Georgiana standing, looking all the more affected by you know, these changes. Mm. Actually, we'll do that. We'll use that as a chance to transition, skipping Jackson entirely across to Jim to introduce your character and set the scene. Quick, now I get to act surprised. I get to steal Jackson's intro. No, hello, I, I, I am Jim. I am playing Miss Georgiana. I am a sensible older sister uh, in this adventure, and I'm currently standing in the long corridor, having just fumbled a luck roll, uh, which is never a good place that you want to be. Uh, I wanted to ask, how visible am I currently standing in the long corridor from the outside world? I'm sort of a little bit hidden at the minute, yeah, right? Yeah, good point, actually. Yeah, you, you made it pretty clear that you actually wanted to be avoiding it. So the doorway to the long corridor is actually closed. It's the one that leads out to the garden, which is, you know, dark and very much the sun has set now that is open and probably <laughs> no one can see you at the moment. So when Reverend Jennings swings around, it's looking at the, the closed door rather than seeing you on the other side. A critical point here would be that I've just seen that the long corridor is longening much faster. In the couple of hours that we've been at the house, it seems yes. to have grown by about three feet. I currently don't have any eyes on me. There's a mysterious open door at the end of the hall. I think that just to set the scene, I'm probably going to use the scream as a distraction to yeet towards the open door. Oh, hell yeah. Because I might not get another chance to, yeah. to snoop around here. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so hearing the scream, it sort of right, raises the hairs all up your back, which were already lengthening as you were moving through this area and feeling like a chill beginning to set into you. You saw that stretched white chalk mark all across it. And as you, you know, you're going just to put the painting back into place and you almost drop it when the scream goes out, but rationalize it and take advantage of the opportunity, turn and sprint towards the doorway. That's terrific. Um, all right, we will go now across to... Uh, Let's go to Jackson. Resume the order. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most relaxed I've ever right. seen him. <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll come back to the table since you asked. <laughs> that bit went on too long. I committed it too early, and then I felt like a huge dickhead for like I thought two very, whole uh, minutes. It was just awful. Just seeing the foot creep up into frame was the best part for me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jackson, and I'm really glad to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to Chaosium for letting me play on the stream of Chaos. It's such a good time. And I am playing Captain John Stone, who has returned from the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, you know, body still mostly intact, mind slightly less so. Um, he's frayed, but uh, that's okay. He's just heard a, a scream, which means someone's in trouble, which means someone's in danger, which means there's a problem. He can solve with his hands because that's that's something you can understand. People blowing up and dying and getting killed is much more easy to understand than the rules about mm. dancing and courtship. Yeah, there's something actionable. You're kind of hoping there's something you can use your saber on, given you are one of the... You are probably actually the only armed person at this okay. event. There would probably be access to weapons, like the butlers and... like. There probably would be weaponry somewhere, but the butlers aren't armed. It's not like they're expecting opposition. So you carrying your cavalry saber uh, are particularly well equipped. All right. Well, finally, we will go across to Alex to introduce Miss Emma. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm playing Miss Emma Wentworth, the excitable younger sister uh, who was debut ball has uh, turned into a bit of a cluster, to be honest. Uh, not that she's mad about it or anything. She was worried the night was going to be boring and is kind of thrilled that things took an exciting turn. Less thrilled about the information she found out uh, about her friend, Miss Elizabeth Northlake, who apparently is going to die. Yeah. So the most recent uh, session, you found evidence that every hundred years, the eldest Northlake child perishes. Uh, like clockwork, it, yeah. come September and uh, checking it's your September. own dates. It is September. And, something... and she's the oldest child. It's bad stuff. It's bad, bad stuff. Okay, um, friend, and you were just going to warn your friends. You haven't had a chance to share this information yet. When mm -hmm. the scream erupts. So the ball is was still in full swing. There was people dancing up in the, uh, the ballroom and uh, cards being played elsewhere. Uh, just coming through the uh, the main hall with the stairs and everything, you can see uh, Sir James Northlake was talking to the Reverend who was just moving to leave. Uh, that's where Captain Stone and Miss Emma are walking through. In the small parlor, Reverend Jennings is playing cards with uh, the uh, grandmother, Mrs. Sarah Coombs, as well as Dr. Parsons and his wife, Mrs. Abigail Parsons. When 
a shrill scream erupts from the western wing. It rises higher and higher and then breaks off shakily and everyone swings around. Now, people in the ballroom might not react immediately, but as uh, Sir James and the Reverend whirl and begin to head towards the library, likely sweeping Captain Stone and Miss Emma up along with them, uh, the ballroom doors open. People will begin to pick up that something is happening and start to make their way there. Uh, Reverend Jennings, the other three people in uh, your company also react to the sound and begin to step up. Uh, Mrs. Coombs looks uh, sort of shaky, uh, takes a moment to react, but then hauls herself out of the chairs. Uh, and Dr. Parsons uh, will take a moment to tell his wife that she uh, tells her to fetch his uh, medical bag just in case. And she's going to move to like where some like coats and things would have been put away, where he might have brought some you know lighter implements just in case such an emergency uh everyone is making their way there no one's sprinting this is still a to-do event and even in the event of an emergency one will walk relatively orderly so they're moving with pace but like if you wanted to get there first a short dash down the corridor would seize you that opportunity um what are the well four of you doing given james you're also going elsewhere but i'd like to know what you're all what your plans are i would like to dash down the corridor okay this Captain is Stone. This is this is like all of the anxiety, all of the social anxiety yeah. he's had coming out in his legs. Okay, um, as you turn to to race away, uh, uh, Lord Northlake will call out to you, Captain Stone. Uh, caution, please. Uh, let's not cause, let's not cause any further anxiety as you dart around the corridor and out of his sight can haul us towards the library. Uh, you will be the first on the scene. How walking behind? Okay, uh, Miss Emma comes uh, shortly behind uh, in the company of Reverend uh, Choke and uh, Lord Northlake. Uh, Reverend Jennings and Miss Wentworth, the, el the elder. <laughs> After you, Ms. please, Wentworth Reverend. Senior. That's it. She loves that. Uh, yeah. Um, Experienced. Level two. Uh, so the, the three people that are in the room with me um mrs parsons is moving off to get something from he's gonna go board. she probably goes to find one of the staff nearby and will ask them for it dr parsons strides out of the room looking he's shaken by it but not stuff he's walking there uh, and uh, mrs coombs is somewhat shakily making her way there as well offering her an arm and assisting her there would not be inappropriate Right, in that case, yeah, I will absolutely. Um, I think there's a moment where uh, Re Mr. Jennings and Reverend Jennings um, <clears throat> looks back towards the door of the long corridor uh, as as though there is a, like, I, I know that one of my, you know, acquaintances from this event uh, is there, uh, a, young, a young lady who really should be you know, chaperoned and and looked after as the the delicate vessels that they are. Um, the, the, the ladies are they they need looking after because that's how we think about women. This is where we're at. Period. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> delicate flowers that must Blossom not be crushed. Plucked. <laughs> Before that time. <laughs> um, this is kind of morning. Um, yeah, so I think there is there is definitely like a bit of a torn. There is a young lady who is is currently potentially in a dangerous situation, but um, seems relatively competent and drawing attention to the fact that she's somewhere she shouldn't be would be uh, potentially negative to her reputation. And I don't have any desire to to diminish anyone in the eyes of the people here this evening. So. All that goes through the head of, of the good reverend um, moments bef in that glance to the door before turning back, seeing uh, the dowager, oh, sorry, Mrs. Coombs um, in some distress and will offer an arm. Um, and if I may, mm -hmm. um, whether it is mechanically necessary or not, I do have this era's version of, um, what is it? Psychotherapy? Yes. Because uh, we're not in the world where psychotherapy is a thing. So, because the good reverend is such a kind-hearted soul, I have the skill reassure. You do. Um, <laughs> you do. And I, I would like to. I would like to take the opportunity to. 
I don't, it doesn't need to be mechanical at this stage, but I would like to, to lean on the fact that I have that as a, I am a reassuring presence, or I would like to be, so I, I would like to lean on that as a absolutely reassuring, um, reassuring the good lady uh, that someone of faith is here and is is uh, stable and, and able to assist. Yeah, um, um, so you, you, you are actually, yeah, you have a reasonably high reassure skill, and it, this is absolutely... 50-50. Yeah, it's still relatively significant. Uh, this is absolutely a time where you might employ it. You can you can make that roll if you wish. Succeeding will calm her down and possibly win her favor. Failure here is risking overstepping a touch, and you know, also possibly dawdling and taking the time to speak with Mrs. Coombs rather than rushing to the event. So, you, or you can just say that you give her a pat on the arm and head across, not doing any you know, not trying to push it any further. I mean, if failing means maybe dallying a little longer, uh, more so than like fucking up my uh, reputation. It would be fumbling. It would be fumbling that would affect fumbling the reputation. That would... Yeah. Okay. Um. You know what? Why not? Let's okay. let's start this off with a fifty-fifty shot. Let's see how delightfully reassuring our reverend is when he's a little stressed himself. Let's hit it. And while we're doing that, uh, Captain Stone, could you give me a quick reputation roll? I just want to see if you rushing away is gonna uh, play <laughs> into or. Ooh. Okay. All right. Uh, Captain Stone, can you just take humble. just reduce your reputation by a point as you're just you know rushing a little, you know, showing a little bit too much uh, uh, eagerness to to head to the disaster. Um, Maybe I'll get it back when I save someone's life. Yeah, when you when you slay the monster single handedly, of course you will. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Reverend Jennings, you pause for a minute. Yeah, not overstepping, but uh, sort of taking a moment to like check in on on Mrs. Humes as people are now beginning to flood out of the ballroom. And after she shields you, no, no, I, I'm fine. It, it's whatever's in there. Let's go and see what's happening. Uh, she just still takes your arm. Oh, You're now behind the sweep of the ballroom, and you will struggle to get into it and see what's happening easily. Um. I, I am not the kind of person, while I, I am, I'm not the kind of person who needs to be the first person on a scene. I am someone that needs to be one of the last people to leave yeah. a difficult situation. So I don't think I'm, I'm too concerned. I'm not any more reassuring than anyone else would be, but I, I'm still a presence uh, okay. for the, for the lady. Um, and I'm happy to be so. Okay. Um. Lastly, Jim, I'm not gonna. G I just want to get your intention. What What are you What are you planning? Yeah. So So I'm going to. I hear the scream. I turn around. Uh, honoring the fumble, I probably dally for a while. There's a bit of. Uh, then I. Oh, well that that fumble's that. being honored. You don't need to honor it any further. Okay. All right. <laughs> There's That's a right. Why don't motion. we just take the the terrible penalty that I hesitated for a second? That instead. Affects you that. can forget <laughs> whatever. No, no you, you um, act really quickly, actually. <laughs> I'll be heading towards the uh, end of the corridor that with the open door, I plan to just kind of stick my head out and have a look. I'm thinking maybe I'm going to spot somebody moving around that has something to do with this. There's one last thing I'd like to do. It's a little... Uh, I, I, I really think that with her curiosity, Georgina might do this. Yeah. I've seen the chalk mark expand. Uh, I'm hanging up this painting. Uh, could I just take off one of my myriad of rings as a well-to-do <laughs> society lady and hook it behind the rim of the picture? I've just got in the back of my head this idea that if I've got a gold ring that suddenly expands, that could be a lovely way to uh, secure quite a bit of wealth for my family. And, and considering that I really don't have uh, many prospects of making my own money, uh, this could buy me some time as a... That, it, it, Happy to not do it. If no, you no, think no, it's no, 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 no. I really like it. Um, can you give me a can you give me a intelligence roll? Certainly. Coming up. Oh, go on, Dave. Don't worry about what the scenario says. <laughs> Some gold. Okay. That is a success. Um, I'm trying to remember how much you your your parties shared information wise with one another. Um. All I your... don't believe we've been back together as a group a since while. we split. So, or that we might have come back together briefly before we decided to do this most recent split of cards to um to like going to the library. So I I think anything we've learned in those two separate areas, we don't know anything prior to that. I suspect we do know or were able to share briefly. Here's what here's what I'll say. Um. 
Miss Georgiana, you are, you come from a reasonably well-to-do family, but you will not inherit it. It's going off to an uncle or something when your father, when your family passes. You're being married off to some strange Dutch man, if I remember correctly. Uh, as you as you pause here, even in the grips of sort of unease and light terror, you can't help but think how grand it would be to stumble upon great riches and find yourself a fortune. And you hook the ring on the other side and hope that somehow it might grow. And then you can return to the rest of your investigation. Perfect. So, and I'll be firing down. Perfect. All right, so we're going to... Uh, so. Captain Stone, you're going to be first on the scene. Miss Emma, you're going to be close behind, but uh, I'm going to focus on you, Jackson, first, as you're going to uh, hurdle up the hallway, racing in your sort of, like, dress uniform and with your saber, probably, like, subconsciously gripping the saber to stop it rattling and really reverting back to that, like, wartime stride that you would do when, when called by one of your... When, when called to duty. You go racing along the hallway, sort of moving around one of the, the staff members and skidding in front of the tall wooden doors of the library. Uh, one of them is open and the other shut. And as you swing around it, you see the familiar room with the uh, the books decorating the northern uh, face, uh, almost completely empty, uh, with one of the windows has curtains drawn across it, the other has them thrown open, and now standing where she was sitting before is the Dowager Lady Emma Northlake. She's staring out the window as she was previously, but where there was a look of sort of bliss is now a whitewashed terror. Her eyes are sort of pinkish with tears. Her mouth is still open and she's got one of her sort of like slightly wise and like older fingers pressed against the glass, tapping at it. Uh, and you can see that the scream she let out is still trying to emerge. It just petered out for a lack of breath. And she's beginning to see like a red flush rising up her throat as she isn't inhaling anymore. She is in complete shock and terror. She is the only person in the room and she's jabbing at the glass, trying to scream again as she looks out to something in the darkness that you cannot see. Shortly behind you is coming uh, Lord Northlake, the Reverend Choke and Miss Emma. Uh... Before you act immediately, I'm going to tell you that as soon as uh, Lord Northlake sees this, he's going to turn to the Reverend and say, say, Reverend, stand here for a moment. May, uh, stop anyone else coming inside and, and, and keep Miss Emma company. Uh, Miss Emma, as a... Basically, he's looking to care to your fair demeanour and, and wouldn't risk you having a fright. Uh, he's going to move to come inside and comfort his uh, mother. Uh, and Captain Stone, you're already inside. The Reverend Choke is going to stop anyone else going in and stand with you. I, I will assume that there's a, a a brigand of some description outside. So I'd go over with Lord 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 Lord, Lord Nord. Why is that hard to Lord say? North Lake. Lord North Lord Northlake. <laughs> yep. Am I crazy? Is that hard to say? Lord Northlake. I don't think All right, so. All right, that's fine. No, I think you're good. Lord North. I, I want to say Nord Lothlake. <laughs> Uh, that's what I'm going for. And now I'm going to want to like. say that, so you yeah, just ruined yeah, the street yeah. for everybody. The oh well, I'm going to go over with Lord Lothlake. Lord Lothlake. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, and say, uh, madam, madam, did you uh, did you see something out there? Is there uh, uh, something n n n n not not toward something she, toward? She's not taking you in. She continues to look completely pale and uh, not uh, bringing in any extra breath. She's now just sort of gasping and spluttering slightly as a nail taps at the window and looks inside. Uh, her son walks up and uh, puts a hand around and goes, goes, mother, mother, have you had a fright? Sit down, please, and tries to, like, draw her closer, but she's not moving and standing sort of, like, stiffly as a board. Uh, you can try and make a... something like a reassure role would probably be the most appropriate, uh, or you can try psychology to get a sense for her, or you could peer out into the darkness. Yeah, you wish. if I get the sense that, uh, yeah, that's, that's, you know, if she saw something outside, I would peer into the darkness, and failing in peering into the darkness, I would sprint outside because... Okay. I'm ready to get out of this house now, to be honest. So I'm going to ask you to make a spot hidden roll. Uh, and this is going to have a penalty die as you look out into the dark. From a well-lit room on the interior, it's hard to see outside. 73, 33 points of luck. Almost all of them, I'll keep them. You also do, you do have the opportunity to push this. Doing so, oh, so doing so will risk your reputation as you unceremoniously shove 
the Dowager Lady Emma to the side in an attempt like, to peer uh, out the window. Try to open the window and then smash it. Yeah, yes, exactly that. Like trying to before I, you. Do, I'm I just going to tell you. Okay. Because then I got because then I got a quick point of egress. Yeah, that works. For me. All right, before you roll that, I'm going to tell you. Just, even on a, you're going to get some information on a failure. This is for some extra context. But go ahead and push that. Let's see what happens. Do I still get the information if I smash the window? Yes, yes, yes. You'll you'll, you'll get Excellent. some basics. I did. It's not a lose situation here. My, <laughs> it's my reputation all positive. is already tumbling. I think I'm gonna let He's gonna ride go this to free fall This and is focus on the monster. This is a little bit of they invited a man with war trauma to a party. What they did gave... they think? And they brought you here kind of as like a hero, like as yeah. a as a fun thing to have. <laughs> They're getting what they asked for. This is fine. Uh all right, one more spot hidden with a penalty die. No, never mind. Okay. Um, push I have to break the window so that I can get out there. Distra uh, distracted by the Lady Emma and unable to see outside, fearing that there may be a brigand and taking the opportunity to perhaps be a hero again, Captain Stone uh, probably doesn't draw the sword, but rattles the window and then shoves them open, breaking them at hinges and shattering glass. And there's a cold rush of air that comes inside. Uh, Lord Northlake yet lets out a yell as you do so. And as glass rains down over his sweet older mother, um, no. you can feel your reputation tumbling in his oh. eyes and likely the others. Uh, Miss Emma, you will see this looking around the corner. Uh, and honestly, with Reverend Choke will probably be briefly distracted. You might find a, a chance to slip inside if you wish it. But before I do that, uh, Captain Stone, as you're as you're pushing this open, uh, some of the glass is sort of shattering and falling down, and you will notice for a moment there is a spat of blood, but it was on the outside of the window. It wasn't smeared or anything, like there wasn't buckets of it, but there was a mm. few splatters of it. And as you shove this open and begin to, if you wish, step outside, uh, I'm going to ask you to lose a d6 of reputation. Oh, fantastic. The, uh, uh, I was waiting for you to come outside and see the shadow of me exploring and shooting <laughs> or something. <laughs> uh, you don't know if it was fresh or not. Uh, could have been stabbed. With the window now broken as well on the fumble. Now I just lost five reputation in a you single did. hit. Do I have a, a, a bout of cringe or something? You do. Yeah, so, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> reputation has this great mechanic where you can be something called censured. So if you lose a fifth oh, of yeah. your reputation in a single evening, it's like being indefinitely insane. Basically, you are just not to be associated with for the rest of the event. You might be asked to leave. Uh, you might be soundly dismissed. There's a wealth of things that can happen. So have you hit that fifth threshold? I sure have. Oh, amazing. All right, I'll get the rules up. This is rules. Uh, so reputation. I only started on 40. Which I is odd. Lost. I think uh, I think you're just below. It's the same as indefinite insanity because you're in a tenth currently for four at forty. So unless you've lost I, another I four on... over the course of the night, I believe you've taken two. If off the top of my head. Oh, I, don't think... I, I I think I thought I was on thirty-eight. Yeah, I was on Damn. thirty-eight. I just lost five. I already lost two points. Mm. I started on forty. I already lost two points. So over the course of the evening, you've gone. You're from starting 40 with forty. Down 40 to forty to thirty-three. Yeah, so you need to. You have, have one more point eight. to lose. <laughs> What? I oh, thought you said buddy. lose a fifth. Yeah, that'd be eight. A, a fifth. A fifth of 40 is eight. Oh my gosh. Five eighths of 40. This is hard. No, but genuinely, <laughs> you are on thin yes. ice, buddy, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought a fifth of 40 eight was, fives was six. Eight fives are 40. Yeah. Nine uh, fives that's are 45. Where, Ten fives that's where are I got 50. Stuck. That's don't, where I got stuck forget. if you're playing along at home. Stay in school, kids. Stay in uh, school. Do your times so, tables in the car with your mum. Uh, basically, uh, you, you you are skating my own thin ice. This is a fairly egregious thing, and not only will Lord Lothake see it, the Reverend Choke sees it as well, Miss Emma sees it, and some of the people outside see it as well. This scatters like wildfire. Basically, it seems the Captain Stone. Also, they don't know what Miss Emma was screaming about. They didn't see you running. Basically, they see oh. her yelling, and then they see <laughs> you smashing a window. I, I, I said loud enough for everyone to hear, was there a brigand out? No, probably not loud enough. No, no, no you, you still yell, but you basically seem mad yeah. and yeah, that's completely inappropriate you smash open the window spotting for a second the glimmer of blood on the outside but as it's dashed on the interior no chance to inspect it further and then if you wish you can continue this thread and begin to hoist yourself out yeah. perhaps in captain stone's mind thinking there's a chance to remedy this i need only find the brigand you know that is probably partially what i was thinking but he's He's just not that into reputation. His reputation. Yeah. I don't think he understands the consequences yeah. yet. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's terrific. Um, Lord North, like, uh, like, lets out a Captain Stone and will reach to grab you as you go outside and, and haul you back towards you. You can try and you can give me a dodge roll. This isn't a full attack. This is just him like grabbing you and hauling you inside as you as you move to leave. I, would, I kind of just want to drop like a stone. So if you can get me out of the window by taking damage. I can do that if you want to, if you want to, yeah, we can risk a little glass. <laughs> okay, why don't you go ahead and take take a D3 of damage as uh, sliding on the outside and with your coat, you will have your coat stripped from you as you drop out the other side and, and uh, Lord North like holds it. It's not a big drop, it's, it's on the first floor. You're just going down to the garden beds on the other side. But now it's also scrambling up this way would be inappropriate as well. So you've kind of removed yourself from the scene. Uh, as you land on the other side, your jacket removed, now dressed in your sort of like vest. There's a thousand layers in all these costumes, mm. but you still, with your saber still intact. Uh, Lord Northlake is positively bristling uh, at the affair, oh. and uh, perhaps the Dowager Lady Emma has at least been somewhat distracted as she's as she st actually. You know, you don't notice you're heading off. Miss yeah. Emma peering in from the corridor where the Reverend Choke has just gone blue at the side of Captain Stone doing something so inappropriate. Uh, you will notice uh, the Dowager pretty much unfazed by Captain Stone's uh, actions continues to stare out with a hand pointed into the darkness beyond. Uh, what do you want to be doing? I want to find my friend. I'm going to look at this situation, the screaming, the glass, the captain eating himself out a window and tanking his reputation, and I'm going to back out of the room, just take a couple of steps back, and then I would like to find Elizabeth. This seems like a great time to find my friend who is in danger and at risk and and, and kind of get her the heck away from whatever this is. Yeah, fantastic. Um, all right, so... Uh... Whirling around and heading like, back into no, the hall. This is this is messy. This is messy. We're not doing messy. No. The hall is now packed to the brim. Not to the brim brim, but with, with people all throughout it. And moving through it takes some difficulty. You could slide out. Uh, the There's a... Uh, actually, there isn't a door on this section. It's on the other side only. You could uh, try and head into like the ballroom, or you could go to push through all of it to try and find her. You will also see at the back of all of this, Reverend Jennings walking with uh, Mrs. Sarah Coombs. Uh, I could see a dex roll or something to slide through. This is just basically trying to do this while the event is still unfolding. One question, though. When I get to the door of the, of the parlor... Um... Is is the Dowager still holding her Bible? Yes. Uh, actually, drop? actually, okay. no, no. As she stood up in okay. shock, it's scattered to the ground and is now resting with the spine broken on the ground. It's not shattered or anything, but she's definitely left it tumble with no care. The Reverend, the Lord, no, Lord, no. Lord Northlake is almost completely distracted by Captain Stone. I know, I know, but. Uh... No. We're not at not with, a, not with a sleight of hand at 10. Let's just leave <laughs> that one. Right uh, you, do, is your stealth high? You could, you could, I could definitely see my stealth, stealth here. My stealth is very, very good. At, no, not very. My stealth is pretty good. Because you're not looking to lift it so much. You're just looking to get out and get in and get out without being spotted. I am kind of looking to lift it because that's how I'd prove to Elizabeth that she's in danger. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, but I'm thinking it's, it's on the ground currently and not mm. being... Uh, yeah. Like looked for. You could a stealth roll would see you yeah, retrieve that. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind retrieving that one because that's my proof that that Elizabeth's in danger, and I can see myself having a tough time convincing her otherwise. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to try and get that? Yes. Okay. Go let's ahead. Let's see if we can tank two reputations let's, in the space of in the space of one. Let's do it. Go ahead. And it is going to be what? a straight stealth roll. Maybe. <laughs> We might be tanking two reputations in one oh. scene. You're able to slide into the room past the Reverend Choke, but stepping towards it, uh, you are you don't confidently feel you can take like, it and get out. You can push this roll, also rep risking reputation. And this will be quite similar to Captain Stone. This would be fairly severe. This would be yeah. taking advantage yeah. of Now you'll you'll pass off. This isn't like they're not gonna immediately jump to you're trying to steal from us. They're gonna think you were 
Like they're not really going to. I'm trying know- to inject myself into this situation where going I'm not in really, and like- taking the Bible and running away with it is just not even on their mind because no. why on earth would you do that? They're just going to think you're being woefully inappropriate. Uh, so yeah, they're going to think that I'm inserting myself into this situation where I have absolutely no right to yes. be. Yeah. Which I kind of already am, but like getting any closer would be like this. At this point, I'm like reasonable level of concern. Okay. Do you want to risk a uh, push roll? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Do you want to do something? Hey, hey, Captain, do you want to do something like loudly and like horrifying to like distract people further? That'll give me a bonus. He's already got him pretty uh, distracted. Aside from smashing the window and diving out of Lord. Lord That's kind of yeah. bought you the opportunity. Um, yeah, okay. I tell you what, Alex. Right. It, it, so a straight push roll is you like going for this, attempting to bundle the whole thing uh, into your pretty yellow dress and, and, and whirl around and disappear. You can take a bonus dice with you if you want to up the stakes and rather than going for the whole thing, you are just going to rip out the two relevant pages, basically break, like tearing the Bible get to grab the uh, the family tree on the front and the single page with the note. Actually, it would just be the, it'd be the flat, um, the base the of the, the cover. You're basically yeah. going to rip the cover off and then jam yeah. that down. That will... That it will be. I don't think I'm quite there yet. I don't think. Okay. I don't think. I don't think this is like bad and weird. But I don't think I'm quite there yet. I think yeah. if I'd actually seen like something, something, yeah, I might be there. But I don't think I'm quite at that point yet. Um, okay. So I'm happy to just push it real good. All right, go ahead and roll that again. That's worse. And that is oh. a fumble. That is a fumble. Fumble. Okay. Uh, you are also going to... Captain gonna... Stone, how do you feel about being in exile? Let's, let's go to the exile as, you, as long as we're together. As you, oh. reach, as you reach down for the Bible and, and come... And you, you reach down for the Bible and sort of move it under a skirt and turn to begin to move the other way when you hear uh, Lord Northlake say, Excuse me, Miss Wentworth. I think you'll find that's mine. And as you turn around, he's looking right at you. His mother's still staring out the window. And the Reverend Choker stepped inside and said, the family Bible. Uh, and Lord Northlake has his hand out towards you to give it back. Yes, I'm going to hand it to him. I was so worried it was going to get more glass on it. <laughs> he passed it across. Imagine one of, the, one of the children picking it up and, and being showered in shards of glass. He's... Honestly, slightly dumbfounded that you would even attempt to take this. Do you want to try a fast talk roll? Yes. This isn't going to fix the whole thing, but this is just going to give oh. everyone here a, a a chance to yeah. Okay, go ahead and give me a fast talk roll. I, I, this is give me a chance to like walk out of the room with at least a little. It, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's like they'd rather have the lie. It gives them an out. Exactly. Yes, they're, like they're kind of the, looking they'll for. Accept it. it. We all know it's not true, but yes, that, it's that's just it, more polite. That's exactly it. He's honestly grateful for the experience. All right, uh, you are still going to lose uh, a, D, oh, yeah. a D4 uh, of reputation, but it gives a excuse at least. And with the Bible handed back across to him, he uh, is going to quickly take charge. Okay, so three points. He's going to quickly take charge of the situation. Yeah. He's going to tell... Um, uh, uh, Reverend Choke to alert the butlers, have someone go around the side and find and, and fetch Captain Stone and bring him back inside. Uh, he's also going to head over towards, and as you are escorted outward, um, Miss Emma, he's going to turn to one of his heads of staff, an older looking butler, probably one of the heads of the, the household, and say, Do a head count of the guests immediately, make sure everyone's still here. And then the butler's going to turn and begin to move through the crowd, checking on people. Um, the down to Lady Emma is still shaken. Lord Northlake is stepping away, but you are being very much taken back out into the main area. That's where I was going anyway. Okay. I'm going to go find Elizabeth and try and convince her without any proof that she's in mortal danger. Yeah. Good luck. Um, all right, so in that case, you're going to step out. Um, Reverend Jennings, your context of all of this is you heard the scream, escorted Mrs. Coombs out past a large group of people. You have since heard some yelling or not yelling like some shock and you can already hear ripples 
washing through the crowd as the gossip filters down. Uh, from your perspective, you understand that Captain Stone has flung himself through the window in pursuit of some brigand or another, and Miss Emma Wentworth appears to have, uh, appears to have, uh, they're just saying sort of, put her nose where it doesn't belong, uh, in sort of like a little, a little nosier, a little, a little uncouth. Um, it does appear that the two companions, the people you've met tonight, are inserting themselves into these affairs. Uh, what would you like to be doing? You are at the back of the crowd, um, and you'll begin to shortly see butlers moving through, and they are checking on everyone, making sure people are all right. Um, as much as, like, so is the, is Lady Coombe, is Mrs. Coombe still with me? She's still with you currently, yeah. At this point? Um. She will possibly also, as the butlers head towards it, she'll probably speak to one of them and try and get a bit more, like, hey, I'm actually on the inner circle, what's going on a bit more? So just hanging by her might give you a little extra context. Yeah, I I think I might, um, I might stay by her for the moment just because it, it, lends an air of uh, an extra air of respectability and also like yeah i am curious to know what's going on outside of like the rumors swirling um and like if she is still if she herself is still shaky and sort of not like is if i'm still being used as effectively a human walking stick um, I'm not going to remove myself from that position because while I'm in that position, I ideally am less noticeable. Like she's kind of like I am leaning on a thing. This thing is a person. You're also like, a trusted my party. Is... You're pretty. You're you're <clears throat> as bad as you're not in a circle, but you're getting. You know, you're you're, you're trusted. I mean, they all they all now come to my congregation yeah. over the other reverend. So yeah, I I think at the moment I'm I'm not going to insert myself to, like actively into anything but i would like to just sort of passively continue to be around this situation so that if an opportunity comes up i can talk to lord northlake or, or like you know offer essentially in the way of being like i would like to offer assistance with the dowager if that is required as someone who i think i've already gleaned this isn't necessarily a medical issue it is more a an a, an affliction of the mind yeah um which i think would be something that would be seen more as the purview of clergy than it would be the purview of doctors yep. so i think yeah could be, just could be demons it'll probably be could be demons could be could be could be ill humors it's also probably um, just a, so, a, a person of sound mind to, to talk to is totally reasonable. Um, so as uh, you, well, with you, with while you're there, then holding on to Mrs. Coombs' arm, she'll speak with one of the the staff and say, you "Ask what's happening," and the staff will say, uh, "Lady Emma Northlake has had a fright. Captain Stone has leapt outside and is pursuing anyone." Who Anyone who may exist without. The may is doing some heavy lifting in the <laughs> sentence. Uh, Lord Northlake has asked that I make sure that everyone is inside and well. Um, Mrs. Coombs will say, find Elizabeth. Make sure she is safe then. And then I think she'll probably turn to you, Reverend, and say, um, uh, uh, excuse me, but I must tend to uh, the Lady Northlake. If you want to, you can easily tag along. I just ask for a charm or persuade role or something similar to uh, walk um, yourself in. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm necessarily... I'm happy to use one of those roles, but the it is not so much an I should come with you. It is a very much a, like, would you care for the assistance of 100%. the member of the clergy in this moment, madam? I'm, I, I'm at your disposal, should you require and give give her the opportunity to say yes please come with me but i i am trying to like 100 so and that, that's it. what this factory this is her possibly yep. asking you to accompany yeah right um persuade i have if that's acceptable you could also do reassure if you if you wanted to because that would that is again you kind of showing the skill that you will be using sure yeah let's let's do a reassure again and see okay. if it's any better fingers crossed yeah okay yeah um uh, she, uh, well, actually, and then say, if it's not an imposition, 
would you attend me? But of course, madam, it would be, um, I wouldn't say a pleasure in this circumstance, but um, it would be an honor to, to assist you and your family. Um, and I think I would take this opportunity to just, as we're walking in, go, forgive an, a potentially impertinent question, madam, but um, is this an occurrence that has happened previously, or is this a, um, a new development in um, the, the situation of the, the dowager um, lady, at this, the elder lady Northlake at this time? Speaking in very harsh tones so that no very one, much. as you're moving along, uh, can pick up the conversation that you're having, you'll say, she's been lost in her mind before, but never to the point of fright or terrors. No, she's always been a rather sunny disposition. This is unusual, and I'd rather like to know if there isn't perhaps someone lurking outside um, as you head to the doorway and step Can in. Can I also do a little, uh, just a, because obviously we heard about the captain. Would it be reasonable, I'd, I'd kind of like to make an offhanded comment to seed something that may, like, help to contextualize the rumor that is happening with yeah. the captain. Yeah, you can Which try. is essentially a lot, it's, it's along the lines of, um, if there's a moment to bring it in to like sort of as an aside to the conversation that we're having, say that um, I am sorry to see that the fright, uh, like the the fright of the the dowager lady Northlake, um, seems to have I don't know what wording they would have used at the time, but essentially triggered the captain into a uh, into a into forgetting perhaps that he is at a ball and not fighting Napoleon in this moment. And I, I, you know, essentially kind of going, hey, maybe give the guy a little bit of leniency. He did come back from a war and loud noises and sudden situations like him moving out to protect people yeah. while not ideal in this search, in this situation and certainly is something that should be like addressed is an understandable place for his mind to have gone we don't necessarily think it is correct for polite society but perhaps it can dull some of that um like oh my goodness did you hear f just for the family themselves to just as a reminder of being like this man does have ptsd essentially yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a role to try and sway the rumors in that way and kind of rebuild a bit of that reputation. It's probably one that you'll need to do later after a bit more time of seeding it. Um, but yeah, you that like would to absolutely start that be process, something essentially. Hundred yeah, percent. So can, that's you can just my... say something along the lines of, "Well, I hope Captain Stone's okay as well," and just kind of be like, you know, we should be caring about him as, and just you get that ball rolling a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, if that's something that I can just say that I have begun to seed now so that, you know, when I do have to make the role, it's not like, out of the blue, I've suddenly done this thing. It's like, this is this is something that I've been actively... Because I have seen that the man is troubled and yeah. it is clear that he is. Um, and I would hate for... I would hate for someone who has been through so much to be seen poorly in the eyes of society simply because he has dealt with something that no one else could possibly even begin to comprehend. Oh, 100%. Um, Unfortunately, that is very much the standard for this. And anyone... Anyone, I mean, like, the society is basically built around excluding people out of it. And if they have a chance to have a little bit of an exclusion, they'll be very excited to do so. Um, it's a treat. <laughs> a bit of exclusion is a treat. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Ooh, well, my, so I mean, literally, the the existence of of this of Samuel Jennings is that he wishes to include as many people in his congregation 100%. as possible. So, hundred um, percent. He's you know he's a nice. Yeah, enough, he's a man. good egg. The technical term. Um, um, all right, so you're gonna you head into the library with Mrs. Coombs as Miss. I mean, given the, the the failure there, you're gonna basically spend a while trying to get out and Captain Stone crunching the grass. We're gonna go back and check in on Miss Georgiana if first. Oh yes, yeah, sir. Go if ahead. If I now. pass, if I'm gonna do a pass you of, of, I'm gonna try and make sure I pass on the Reverend side. And if there, if if you're not too engaged in conversation with the Lady Coombs, fairly engaged. Yeah. What were you, what were you hoping to? It would be good to be able to pass on what I learned. Um, not the whole if, context. Yeah, not, not, no if way. I can't do it, these, I'm these... just gonna kind of. I guess if I can catch, if I can catch his eye, I'll just kind of mouth Elizabeth and just 
just to be like, that's the focus. Just be like, is it there? Yeah, exactly. And you can also give the impression, you can give a bit that. of like a, there's Pretty. something happening kind of yeah. a vibe. Like, hey, let's meet up when we get a chance. Do you, yeah. Do you intimate that the Bible is important in any way? I would like to, but I don't think I can. You guys are going to struggle to do it. I genuinely, this is where I'd be asking um, for probably like sleight of hand, fast talk, a similar deceptive yeah. role. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to, given that you're you're in close company with somebody else. I think what I can do though is kind of give you a, a look that is like a like a this is important, and then mouth Elizabeth, and as I as I pass, just give a nod and say I'm I'm going I'm going to see if I can find um my friend Miss Elizabeth, Miss Elizabeth Northlake. And you can in front of the camera. And you can you can slide past. All right, we're going to go yeah. back to um uh Miss Georgiana. Uh, so shortly after the scream held out, you can hear people beginning to head away. Um, you tuck the ring behind the picture frame and head towards uh, the door. Uh, outside, you can see that there is a cold breeze cutting through and a chill that's an un, uh, unnatural chill for summer. Surely this evening was predicted to be much nicer than this. Uh, and um, you can see that the moon is just beginning to break behind some clouds passing the whole place in quite significant darkness. Um, as you move through, I'm going to ask you to make a spot hidden roll, please. Certainly coming right up. Spot hidden is a failure. Peering out into the darkness, there's nothing immediately moving out there. The trees are creaking slightly and the, the wind that cuts along, but you can't see anything. You can hear behind you, like, the house alive, and it's making it difficult to hear anything from beyond as well. Um, you don't pick up anything immediately. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, I, 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 I think I hover for a, a, a beat, gazing about unseasonable I, I i don't really have the skill set to figure out exactly what's going on here and i don't think i'm quite at the point of immediately jumping to every kind of standard mythos trope you know i i see that there's something undescribable going on but i don't have the wherewithal to be it's like a storybook or yeah projecting. exactly exactly um, do you direct your wait. attention to anything in particular? Do you want to start to walk out towards around the side where the screen would come around? Do you want to look, you know, closer at the the entrance where you're standing or the gardens that linger beyond? Um, you, you know what? I think uh, I, I will I will stand there for a tick and I will make a natural world roll if that's all right, which I'm not great in. I have 10 points above base, but uh, um, just to be like, is this actually set unseasonable? Is this... is 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 the world around changed in some way? Uh, yeah, you can make a natural world roll. That's an extreme success. Okay. Um, unfortunately, it's pretty limited. There's just not a ton of information on this. Yes, it's unseasonable. It it seems to be there's a chill. You you feel unnerved and, and shaken. Yes, it's colder than you certainly would have predicted. It's not like frost on the ground or anything yeah. though. Um, what I probably will say though is as you're standing here that unseasonable chill is beginning to fade somewhat okay okay little little me meta push here uh but just i think i think it still works i don't get like i don't know a whiff of the seaside or something or perhaps there's a flower that only blooms in winter that i get a sudden whiff of or something like oh, that. oh yeah that's a great thought um yes as you as as like the i tell you what, actually I've, I've got something better for you um it fades somewhat and then there's another chill like a very faint breeze washing along it carries a scent with it that is like it's something deeply stale like a cellar closed for winter and then not opened for several months only just cracked and the things inside it have stagnated slightly mm -hmm. begun to turn and with an extreme success it's not coming from outside it's wafting from the corridor behind you and beginning to push out into the gardens beyond like a breeze you can only barely detect i'm now entirely convinced that there's got to be a secret passage there somewhere but i don't think i quite have the time to look at all this and i'm probably counting down the seconds in my head i, I have enough understanding of etiquette to know i can't be spotted away from the party for long i'd like to turn around head back I think I probably pick up the ring 
it, I know it hasn't been long, but um, what I'll do is I'll pick it up as I go and do you I'll close the garden me. door behind you. Or are you going to leave that open? I'll leave it open. Okay. I think I don't change the state. I um, just disregard uh, that. Yeah, and, and, and as I pick it up, I slide it onto my fingers, I'm coming back in, and I want to feel if it's like significantly looser, assuming it hasn't changed at all. Or if the rate is now suddenly massive, you know, maybe it already has begun to get a lot bigger or yeah, something. Yeah, um... Give me a, a... You know what? On such short time, you cannot detect a change yet. You've really... It's been like a minute no. or so. You can't detect any change. for me to leave it there, or do you, do you want, want to leave it there? Yeah, yeah cool. your choice. I leave it there again, and I will rejoin the party as subtly okay. as possible. Uh, yeah, art. Um, in reference to a thing that we discussed maybe off stream, um, what is the situation natural world wise? I'm wondering if there's any, uh, indication that the moon and the time, do they coincide? Or not. As in the rising moon and the time of night. As in, is it still? Are we still within the realms of this night is normal, uh, or have we been here longer than expected? It's that. It's like, the, has anything started to go funny? The there thought that you had all? previously of like it's the time when things would start to be winding down and people heading home and no one yeah. seems to have is there but it's it's just a thought far at the back of your head it's nothing significant it's not you know the clock striking 12 three times in a row or anything it's just an, a sense of unease it seems to be following the you know it's still on the regular tracks that's cool that was just off the back of the natural world or whether there was anything yeah. that we like you you look at a clock it. and the party's still going and oh it's only been half an hour what fun yes yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. Okay. that's great cool just okay. uh... um so mr Jan, you can then uh, try and slide uh, through and you can uh, join the rest you'll probably be the one that you'll probably run to miss emma then as she leaves first i want to check in on captain stone who's probably the most pressing character at the moment then as you drop down with a crunch of glass on the outside you've lost your coat and you've landed in a sort of like very well manicured bush row and pushed your way through it and out to the other side you notice that splat of blood briefly on the window and where you're standing now there's darkness for a moment as the moon is covered and then as it begins to come out the other side you can see this like beautiful little white pebbles that are all along it there are there is like a string of splattered blood running across Ooh. it um and across to the trail to the other side where there are dark foliage and a more like uh, structure like hedge, uh, not full maze, but like hedge gardens, like that the one would walk through and enjoy the fountains within. Dave, I would like to rush headlong to that blood trail. Can you go ahead and give me a uh, track roll, please? Out. I bet. But I'll try. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You follow along the garden. You, you can see a, a sign of blood. Um, you follow along it into the, the, the garden section. Uh, you have to go around like a bush. You consider just barging straight through it. But again, you, you are not actually in a bout of madness or anything. Like you're just trying to follow this and you're focusing on what your objective is. You skirt around it on the other side and it takes you a moment to kind of find the point where the garden lines up and where you would pick up this path. Basically, it takes you a short window and by the time you arrive at the corpse of a small cat that's been broken and one of the limbs sort of like chewed apart, whatever did this is long vanished and there's no sign of it here. Um, it's a little, t like a older tabby cat uh, that seems to have been, uh, it looks as though it was gotten at by dogs. Although as you crouch down in front of it, it looks as though like there's been a large claw mark that's raked along the side of its chest. Hmm. Uh, what's my... I think I've got any natural world or animal, animal can This to, also uh, seems to be the sign. Done this. this also seems to be what caused the blood. It seems like the trail leads right to it. Awesome. Well, there's some kind of beast out here. But, uh... Yeah. I guess everyone just has to stay inside. That's fine. Um, if I still have any clothes, I will gingerly pick the cat up. 
rapid in a them. shroud. Mm -hmm. and hopefully, um, that will be a good look. Yeah. Yeah. You can scope down and wrap it in. You're, you would generally, again, you're not like the best at the etiquette game. You would be, you're probably not going to present this to the whole party, you know? No, yeah. Like, you're yeah, not yeah. going to go, guys, yeah, yeah. check this out. Look what was in the card. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it'll be like, uh, oh, yeah, no. Uh, uh, by the way, you know, whoever cares about this catch, probably no. Yeah, uh, you can <laughs> sort of tuck, you can take your vest off now too and, and wrap it inside hmm. that and step back. Uh, you will find yourself going back in through the main entrance. But and, before I leave, yeah. is there any. Can I get another spot hidden roll now that I've come out into the night and my eyes have adjusted? Any chance uh, for one last look around to see uh I tell you what, what did this? Yeah, go ahead and make a go ahead and make a spot hidden roll. This is gonna be very difficult as the time that's passed for, through the failed basically the string of failures and the opportunity for anything that may have caused this to exit. I just wanted you to finish. Just uh, just finish telling me how I'm going to fail this roll. And, yeah. and now you're going to roll an extreme. It's normally what happens here. <laughs> well, you're saying you want to do it hard? The, 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 the regular success, unfortunately, won't get you anything. And peering out yeah. into the darkness, this place seems unsettlingly untouched. Um, mm. Whatever's moved through here has not, like, torn the whole place asunder or anything or left any clear tracks to follow. The Finding the, the, the cat seems to be the most notable uh, thing mm. in the area. Scooping what kind it of up. Would it be to uh, to identify what made this thing? Uh, you could try a natural world or medicine or something like that uh, to to see if you recognize the first aid. If I've seen you know animal uh, you know animal injuries before. Yeah, you could do first aid. Uh, any of these are going to be with a penalty dice while you're out here in the darkness. All right. Basically, I'll get back inside. Well, light. and find a place to 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 lay this out. Heading back towards the main entrance, you can see a couple of. Like butlers heading out to uh upon finding you escort you back in uh they can see you've got something bundled inside you uh, or in, in in your vest um but they're mostly uh, cautious to to find you and check that you are all right they they will check in on you and say uh, uh captain stone you're well you're you're fine yes yes uh, quite right uh i think there is some kind of beast out here a, a wolf perhaps um, i'm afraid the uh, the family cat has has suffered an untimely end as you say, the, the, the wolf or some such, they're going to look towards one another and say, I, you, you saw something? Uh, no, the uh, the Lady Dowager did, though she wasn't in a, a state to describe what she saw. There, There is, however, this um, a trail of blood, and as I say, this, this poor critter. Um, I can only imagine a, a, a wolf or something similar would, would have done such a thing. It would be best you come inside then, Captain Stone. We'll... Close the doors and check that everyone's inside. Um, they walk you towards Quite the right. interior. Yes. And as you cross the main threshold, you will find, just as the timing works, Miss Georgiana returning and Miss Emma just walking in to go and search for uh, Elizabeth, who you have not immediately spotted. Um, so I everyone... Just say the butlers as well. Uh, yeah, they're, they're going to check everyone's inside and then draws just say, and, and if anyone... Uh, when, when, some, when anyone goes to leave, perhaps... Uh, I don't want to cause a panic, but if anyone tries to goes to leave, maybe just give them a warning. Understood. Well, Lord we'll Northlake as well. Uh, yeah, Jim. Uh, I'm assuming that we'll be briefly be able to rally. Yes, the three uh, of you are going to yeah. cross paths and have a moment of quiet as well as most people are looking into the room with Lady Dowager or have isolated themselves to gossip about things. People are looking at the three of you talking because Captain Stone, you're kind of the main event at the moment, but they're not listening to you so if you three of you want to talk privately you can as much as you ever yeah. can in, in in which case what i might do very quickly just as we rally i will immediately ask because there's a time sensitivity to it if uh we've crashed into each other so quickly i'm not sure how the angles of the house will exactly work here both from a euclidean and non-euclidean perspective <laughs> but um uh did captain stone pass by the hallway or did he have sight of the hallway as he was entering the house because i'd he like did to ask not did, okay no he, he went out the sorry look if you look like at was... if you guys want to look at the map quickly for me mm -hmm. um and i'll i'll pull it up for uh, i was working on the theory that maybe it appeared shut from outside and not from inside or something uh, yeah, so he, he didn't go that way. You mm. stuck your nose out the long corridor up here and looked out in the garden and pretty much went right back in. Other people outside here, uh, ignore the NPC positions at the moment. Uh, 
Captain Stone, you leapt out the library and there's a garden off in that direction. You then went down towards the main entrance again. So this way. So you oh, have right, basically the door. Yeah, back Forward. through the back through the back through the front door. Uh, so that you can come inside and where you're where you're found and escorted within, where the three of you will all cross paths. Uh, you did not go back towards the, the long corridor. Um, Understood. To and across the So line. the just to orient in space. Yeah. The gardens are for the most part surrounding the house yeah. and really only like stop where the entrance is. Uh the dowager lady Emma is looking out to I'm you're going to assume that up is north for the sake of this because yes. I can't see a little compass. Yeah. Right. So she's looking out west, yeah. which is where the captain jumped out and the long corridor goes north into that section of the garden. Yeah, so there's there's basically the house is all in like rays. Like there's like very close gardens all around it. Then there's like white pebbles and things. And then it goes out into a number of different gardens. Uh, you could navigate between I mean, pretty much and lose yourself are, in the... If they are as... as uh fashionable a family as they appear to be they've, they've definitely got a hermitage somewhere on their property now i don't know what that word is but they probably do <laughs> hermitage, <laughs> like a place thing, right? where a hermit lives that they, they, they like, like hire some... artists and stuff to to like like do i do paintings in the in, in oh, the in yeah no they, a... they don't have that then they don't I, I don't want to. I don't want to distract you with like a random stranger that might be out in the gardens that lives there. <laughs> oh, there no, is no. not one so, of those. <laughs> or or he's, like, he's, he's, he's taken ill and is very well accounted a, for. A hermitage <laughs> doesn't necessarily need to be occupied in order for it to be there. It is a space where like potentially someone could be. That, but we, I, it's just if they're fashionable, I'm, they have a weird little space like, in the garden. They might. Like, oh, I don't want to distract you with a red <laughs> herring we are inventing right now. If there is one, <laughs> it's not relevant. <laughs> <laughs> I. I I just need to know whether or not they have one. Not whether or not it's relevant, because it's not going to be relevant, because we've made it up. Okay. But a hermitage is a thing for fashionable families at the time. They, I all... re re retain the right to say there's not a hermitage <laughs> later if that if you are like, and of course a hermitage will contain explosives, because they exclusively <laughs> work with glycerin. <laughs> nope. No, a hermitage is just okay. a weird thing that the fancy, the fanciful upper crust of the time liked the idea of for who's, reasons of natural. Who's old philosophy. mate with his cat? The cat in the box, Schrodinger. There is a Schrodinger's Schroding. hermitage. Until we perceive it, <laughs> or until it is not relevant, there may or may not be a hermitage on the estate. <laughs> old mate with the cat in the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, man. you know what I meant. <laughs> Yeah, we do. I didn't until you said it, but that's fine. <laughs> really? As soon as you said, oh, mate, with a cat in a box. The cat in the box? Schrodinger. Schrodinger, who, like... Oh, mate, yeah, with the cat in a box. Oh, mate. Oh, mate, with his cat in a box. Who, like, fully... With the cat of indeterminate state. Yeah. Who's yeah. your man? Who fully used that as, like, a... Who's this your man is with the apple on his head? Bullshit. And now everyone's like, this is how we explain quantum theory. And he's like, yeah. no, no. I, that's not... <laughs> uh. Um, all right, well, has some natural world and wants to look at a dead cat. I'll pass it to, uh, well, in that case, I'll pass it to uh, the two Wentworths and Captain Stone then to share information, then we'll check back in on, on Reverend. So up to the and preview. we can share information fairly privately, yes? Yes, relatively. Well, we're privately. in that, we're, we're as much as we can. We whisper yeah. quickly. Yes. Um, yes. I will share immediately what I know about the Bible that. Uh, the, the family Bible has a family tree in it, and every hundred years, the eldest child dies uh pretty much right now actually september every hundred years which is you know now and elizabeth is you know the eldest child so i'm gonna go find my friend um okay um what that's elizabeth is, is in, is in i i, I smelt the, the the corridor was growing growing more and I, I could smell something old death or something it, it rushed Maybe may, I was working on the theory that maybe part of the the, the the catacombs, the mausoleums or something, had had become exposed to the hallway, and that was causing the. But it's grown three feet again, and not in a natural means. The chalk. I, I relay my information. <laughs> I'm somewhat more concerned about the uh, wolf or similar beast stalking the gardens right now. Uh, I'm not sure if you know who this uh, cat was dear to. It was, it was uh, Elizabeth it was had a number. Elizabeth. Of, she was keen on pets. You don't know this particular she liked one. Animals. Yeah. And if, I, I, and if, I'd wager it was Elizabeth's. I, I, uh, hmm. and, if, and if they're all connected, I don't know much about manner of beasts, but I know that some of them can have long lives. And if one's picked a grudge against a family, perhaps one that moves underground through the 
the family catacombs or something. I, I, oh, whoever does well, this then? breeds them for this purpose. I don't know, but if there is a beast that is attacking the family or creatures close to the family, I need to find Elizabeth. We may have trouble considering the uproar and the like the, the 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 uncouthness of the whole situation, but we I I don't know. I, we 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 find Elizabeth. We should find the Reverend too, and maybe maybe. I pass the Reverend. He's going into the library. He he um is accompanying Lady Coombs and had his had his reassuring face on. I should like to post a watch. In case the beast returns. Here's a suggestion, um, Captain. They they given what happened with the blast, and I'm assuming I've heard now the enough rumor that I have about the spreading. situation. They might be quite willing to have an excuse to have you uh, take a stroll. Um, maybe you could propose to go on a tour around the gardens to make sure that all is well. You're quite well equipped to do such a thing. Uh, potentially, like you that. could request any number of others or us to accompany you, and maybe a detour to the to the mausoleum at that time can be mm. subtly struck in. I, 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 well, yes, in the meantime, indeed, if there's a shelter out, out there in the, in the yard, that would be a, a fine place for, for a beast to take refuge. We should just need lanterns and, uh, and the like. I can come with you to help convince Lord Northlake, perhaps, and uh, uh, if you want to go and try and find the Reverend and find Emily. Elizabeth, but yeah. Sorry, Elizabeth. my bad. Elizabeth. <laughs> find what? Elizabeth. <laughs> and find who Homer. Who does Emily? Who does, <laughs> who does who does what? I think that you and Elizabeth. I you and I could go and talk to North Lake. Very I'm good. fairly persuasive and I'm just I'm looking, uh, keep judging by your uh, and I am not. <laughs> um and uh, Alex can go yeah, hook up with Reverend slash try and track down uh the uh, young lady North Lake. Oh. I to do that I'll probably head up the stairs and see if I can get like a bird's eye view on the crowd and yeah. see if I can spot her from there. Okay. All right. Um, Unless I see her while I'm moving through this main area. You haven't currently and it's beginning to be a little bit where is she? Like yeah, you like at first it was just okay, she's not here, she'll be there. Now it's like all right, between the hall, the main room and the ballroom, mm. she would have come to she's always been curious. It's odd she hasn't presented herself to look um, and to see what's going on. She's either been, you know, she's elsewhere. But it's not clear where that is. Um, okay. Uh, so we'll park the, so three of you, so uh, Miss Georgiana and uh, Captain Stone, you're heading back, sort of in the, actually you'll probably find Lord Northwick fairly quickly heading towards the hall. He's also heading around and beginning to get a, a sense of everything. He will set himself up, maybe in the main pile, just underneath the library. Um, uh, you can find him and Miss Emma. You can head upstairs and look for your friends as we'll return to Reverend Jennings, um, who heads into the room with Mrs. Coombs uh, and finds uh, Lady Emma. Uh, not too long after this, uh, Dr. Parsons is going to come inside and begin, to, but he's going to focus on the health, like he will take her temperature and appropriate things for the time. Uh, basically doing like a general wellness check. Uh, get her some water, that sort of thing. But he's not going to focus on the mind twist and leave the talking to you. Just to flag, you are in company for conversations that follow, uh, but you can speak with her. Um, she at first is, she is just now beginning to draw breath again, uh, but she is still in the throes of what you would think of like night terrors. This looks as though she's stumbled out of bed, still half asleep and is seeing some spectre manifest in the hallway. She can't take her eyes from it. And although she is only now beginning to realize she is sleeping, she can still see it. Like she's still in the grips of it. And she keeps on looking out the window and, and um, uh, is white as a sheet. Um, I think I'm going to, um sort of, uh, I'd like to look towards Miss Coombs, almost like, uh, for some, um, sorry, Mrs. Coombs, for, actually, is is Lord Northlake still here? Or Not is presently. He He's left? gone to organise the the house a bit. Okay, so who, it's the Dowager Mrs. Coombs and the Dowager Coombs. Lady Emma. Yeah. And uh, the door is probably, I, I expect Reverend Choke is still making himself important and stopping other people from coming inside. 
Uh, and actually, if people are beginning, if there's beginning to be a bit of like a private family map, let's back her up and get you some. In fact, they probably close the doors so people can't just be peering in anymore. So it's the three of you exclusively. The doctor will make himself and known shortly. He will he will arrive shortly. So if you want a word without him, but otherwise he appears and he's going to focus on. Oh, so it's not. not your no. Um. So in that case, I would look just because, um, Miss Coombs is the closest member of the family to sort of like get approval from so i would look towards her before approaching you have the, the dowager um does she seem particularly concerned with me going to speak to her no no all? she she brought you to to speak and she also seems the two are not super close there is a level of like she kind of like checks in a bit and then is very happy to kind of pass this across to you all right. um in that case I, I will go up to the the dowager uh lady emma and and just say madam um like are, are you well um, do you want to? Would you would you care to to tell me what has happened and see if we can alleviate some of the shock and fear you are quite clearly currently experiencing? Um, and do my best to sort of acknowledge her for how she is, in the hope that that brings her into the moment to then start to relax to not be told, no, don't worry, there's nothing there immediately, but to be like, you are feeling fear, you are in this state, I am here with you, how can we help you move out of this? Because the reverend is good at his job. Okay. Uh, can you please give me a reassure? The reverend may not be good at his job, depending on how this It's pretty goes. good. It's, it's still going through. This is a... This is above and beyond the call of duty. Okay. Um, you begin to... You, you, you get her towards her seat, and... Also, with the window broken and cold air rushing in, I would suggest you draw the curtains, unless you're opposed to that. No, not at all. I would absolutely draw the curtains, yeah. to, especially if that was the direction that the fear seems to be coming from. Um, I will draw them. Is there a staff? Is there a member of staff? One can easily be moment? summoned. Their duty is to be at hand. Great. Um, I would like to have a member of the staff because the window is now broken, just to be nearby in case, like, you know, something comes in, essentially. And I would like to, if she's amenable to it, move, uh, help the lady, uh, Lady Northlake, into a more into a comfortable chair a little bit further back in the room, just a way to remove her from that immediate state. Um, and I think, like, as as we go, um, I will start. Uh, talking through um matthew 6 uh do not worry um verse 25 to 34 where uh, it is essentially a um you know uh, do not worry saying what shall we eat what should we drink or what should we wear for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows you do not need them um seek his kingdom and his righteousness and these things will be given to you as well therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself each day has trouble enough on its own um as a like way to sort of quote because i i am aware she is quite a pious woman given that she has the family bible so i will i will start quoting this passage to her as a way of bringing her back into herself and and talking through that like yes there is worry but it need not be right now yeah um you speak to her constantly to kind of give her thoughts other than her own to focus on as you draw her tall and comfortable chair away from the window seat her down in it and speaking always go to retrieve the bible that spilt on the floor and pass it back to her. actually when lord northlake was given it back he would have placed it on the desk but you know it gives her comfort and you retrieve it and go to walk to hand it to her um as you're as you're now sort of like kneeling across from her and, and talking she's gonna reach out and grip your hands and now her eyes have been drawn away from the now closed window and are settled on you and she still seems in the fit of some state of delusion but she's focused on you at least and she says my lord my lord my lord i i, I saw it something a devil the devil walking through the garden it fucked little tommy up and it tore it apart i saw it i saw the devil in our house my lord my lord um good 
the uh bad sign. The, yeah, I think do I do I have any context of who Tommy is? Or you none don't. like Okay. You Probably, don't uh, and you don't yet have the information that Captain Stone has discovered. Actually not, Mrs. No, no, Coombs no. is present. Uh looking to her for some sort of like any context, she will say Elizabeth was fond of her little tomcat. Um you'll get that it might be the cat at least. Right. Um There are all manner of devils, madam, that that seek to take our peace away from us. Um know that the the good lord is with you in this moment and his light shines upon you and here at least with me and with miss coombs and your family right now madam you are safe you are safe but if you would be so kind tell me could you describe this devil to me so that should he be seen again we can cast him out from the shadows which he, uh, uh, which it, it exists. <laughs> I'm trying Gee. to do my best to sound archaic and godly, and I am neither <laughs> of those things. Uh, I am trying to get more information yeah. from her because devil, like lots of, lots of lay folk throw the term devil around yeah. kind of to describe anything they don't You're understand. You're also thinking it could, be, could just see. be big wolf or something like, yeah. No, 100%. I think I'm I'm definitely, like, of the... If there's, like, a tomcat, because she specifically said it got tore apart, like, that is a concern. But, yes, I'm thinking, like, is it a beast? Was it a man? Like, can you describe this so I understand, <laughs> at least to you, what devil means? Because that I can then take to the Lord and say, this appears to be what we're dealing with, sir. Like, you know, trying to get that information to pass on to Lord Northlake um, as sort of additional, because obviously... She hasn't been particularly articulate so far. Yeah, she says, My lord, my lord, my father was tall, and it was taller than him. It walked like him, too, with hands down to the ground that dragged in the gravel. When the moon saw it, I saw its face, but it was in its chest, where its ribs splayed open to reveal yellow eyes that peered to me even as it plucked little Tom from the ground. My lord, my lord, it looked at me. We are not safe in here. This threshold can be crossed. My lord, Lord, forgive me. Forgive all of us for our sin. Madam, the lord sees you and hears you and know that in his heart you are forgiven. Always. Now, is there something I can bring you? Or your current situation? Do you need wine, perhaps, or, or, or water? And is there anything that you need to feel in this moment safe outside she, of the walls and the servants that are already surrounding us? She's beginning to, to drift a little bit. And Mrs. Coops has heard this, but seems to be taking it more as delirium than any not mm. but is treating it seriously like oh we'll come across and as as uh the dowager lady is beginning to like drift more towards like like the anxious energy has flooded from her and left her depleted is beginning to almost like tie we'll say we'll fetch her a drink i'll settle her with the doctor and put her to bed um reverence i i, I ask you pay little mind to this uh, she's nervous is all and we'll fetch her some sleep the last thing is lady emma as she takes the bible from you um is going to leave it open on the last page where you can see something scrawled on the back and i'm going to pass you a handout now Ooh. that art uh, i'm going to ask you to read that it is in bible cursive note, but i think it's note. pretty legible I confess my sin here in the Holy Bible that God may see my crime and forgive my worthless soul. I did see the black altar and spilled that most precious blood upon it. I did it to stop the monsters. May God forgive me as I surely cannot forgive myself. And can you make a, a language uh, own? It'll be English check. And indeed. There's also kind of factory. 
hard success. Okay. And Ooh. would an extreme help? I could. A, an extreme would point. genuinely help. Yes. Great. Yes. You may have a single point of luck for an extreme because I am that close to an extreme. Okay. Uh, you can. This this note is old, quite old. You are going to through that and through some additional context be able to approximately approximately date this. You won't have this information immediately, but once you work with Miss Emma for some of the information she's gotten on the family tree. Well, I was actually going to ask um, if I might, because the name is there, I was going to look for permission from Miss Coombs to ask if I, because I know there's a family tree in the Bible, to see if I could have a look at that tree and see if there's any... I know that it is likely the cat, but I just want to, like, double-check that there isn't there isn't a, a conflagration that's happening in her mind here where she's saying one oh, name yeah, and there meaning isn't. something I, else. I can give you that because there is... Sorry, uh, two things. First of all, um, you can have a quick look, but the, the Bible is very much a comfort thing for Lady Emma, so she wants to hold it. But what you'll yeah. see is... Thomas Northlake is like the progenitor of like he's the first Northlake listed in the family tree. Um back in 1468 he starts it all. Um the second thing you're going to get on a, on that extreme success is an approximate dating and context on the tree. Uh you believe this note was written by Alistair Northlake who was the one who killed himself uh mm. after his son uh died in 1713. So 1713 he died, then Alistair Northlake killed himself in 1718, and you believe this to be his. Alistair Northlake, I believe, so no. what was the date on that, sorry? 1718. It is not dated, this is you stringing some context together and you will put this together <laughs> in the in the next bit and bot. And just to clarify, we don't have information on whether this was written pre-1713, post-1713. Um... To be clear, it's it post. It's or, post yeah. seventeen thirteen. I'm trying to figure out how you might know that. It's not dated. Um, it, it's post. I, it's post. Wait, it's sorry. Post. So his Alistair's. You get the impression. Sorry, Alistair's this is, son dies in seventeen thirteen. Yeah, Alistair and this Northlake note was written post after that, and then he dies. You get the impression this was written probably quite shortly before he killed himself. This is a in some level a. Oh yeah, no. Uh, am I? Do I now have? I'm going to kind of postulate something, and you can tell me if I have enough context mm -hmm. currently to have done so. I know that I probably don't have the context of, like, someone dies every hundred years. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming I do have the context of this man's son died and then he killed himself. And you would also have the context of me being quite intense about yeah. being like, Elizabeth, I need to find and Elizabeth. And you found being... something. And you would have seen the intensity in the... Yeah, yeah. Where that I just went. Um, so do I, I, so do I, have... I have been in the. Yeah, I've been in this room. Yeah. I may or may not have seen the Bible. You don't know, but I am now worried about Elizabeth. You have, as I mentioned before, Reverend James. You had a slight. When you first moved to the parish, you did some research on the families. And I remember you were like, you would, something was kind of. You remember being like finding something unsettling in the North Lakes history, which you can't quite place. You possibly knew the scandal of the the suicide. That's probably what brings you to Alistair. You don't have the constant flow on hundred. What I will say though is. Um, we will try and get the four of you back to... If you four of you can seek one another out, you can do a little information share. Pretty Essentially sure. I think, all I need to know is, did I know that his son died? Yeah, you can, you can know. And that. I that's then fine. know that he had an accident, which... Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Because yes. my, my thought in this moment, which I will not voice to anyone and even kind of feel potentially, like, extremely conflicted about thinking, mm. is this man maybe closer to I want to say the biblical uh, connection is mm. Isaac or is it Abraham that is is told by God he must sacrifice one of his children uh, on the mountain in order Ab to Abraham's show told Abraham Isaac and is Isaac. The, Isaac's the one that gets sacrificed yeah so uh, I am uh, my brain goes to that story uh, to Abraham and to Isaac and to the, the sacrifice that is theoretically has to be made to, to like show piousness to God and I wonder and I, I do not like where my mind goes and I do not like what it ponders upon but I, I ponder and consider whether perhaps this man was guilt ridden 
we did not just die of sadness, but perhaps also of guilt mm. and yeah. of shame. Perhaps there was more to this than we we anticipated. Yeah. Um, I do not have the context of the rest of the family, but that is something that I, I think I immediately gravitate towards as a potential uh, a, a potential situation. Hundred percent. Um, but um, I do not. I will not say this to anyone. Uh, I perhaps furrow my brow a little, um, and turn to the the to Mrs. Coombs um, and sort of acknowledge, like, yes, this this is clearly a woman in in some state of distress. Um, and if the good doctor has has joined us at this point, I will um, say that uh, from my inexperienced position. The good lady does seem in uh, decent health. Of course, I will defer to your uh, expertise, but perhaps a a tincture to help uh, Lady Emma to her rest um, would be appropriate at this time. She seems distressed still, um, and that may help. But of course, uh, not so much a directive as a you know what you're doing, sir. But may I please, you know, yeah. may I provide this context to you in order? Yeah, um, essentially. <laughs> so what will, what will follow shortly is Mrs. Uh, Coombs will escort Lady Emma along with Dr. Parsons will take her upstairs, put her to bed and drug the hell out of her so she sleeps. Um, Mrs. Coombs, you get the impression of, is, is despite her saying this should be disregarded, is nervous and will reiterate to one of the people as that she goes past, have you found Elizabeth yet? To which they will say, not yet, ma'am, but we're, we're looking and no one has come or gone. Um, and they're continuing to, to, to look. Uh, finally, Reverend, uh, you can go ahead, uh, as this is in... You've done pretty good. Uh, increase your reputation by one point, Mrs. Coombs. I was fairly impressed with how you've done in this wall. You know, uh, in the family's good books. Hell yeah. Um, um, I would... I am... I know I know that this the lady has specifically said, like, disregard it. I can see she's still perturbed. Um, and I think... Again, I'm trying very hard not to overstep while also trying to show that I'm here to help. Mm. Um, and I think I would like to ask Mrs. Coombs in this moment um, if if Lord Northlake, uh, if it would be advisable to let the the good uh, and Sir James know about the contents of what has concerned uh, his dearest mother um, or whether this is something that they would prefer be left alone at this point um, essentially kind of saying I would like to go to the Lord to Lord Northlake with this and potentially see what what is up um but i don't want to overstep bounds and i'm sort of just saying it to, to miss coombs to yeah. also kind of get a read on how she reacts to that question because okay. i can tell she's still a little perturbed and i think i'm also kind of trying to gauge how much of this seems to be she act she does in fact know something else is going on if at all go ahead and give me a psychology roll success okay uh she's she's getting very nervous and although she says disregard it she's focused on elizabeth's absence and is concerned about something being outside the house she is going to you know kind of say you know, even though she said disregard it, she's going, but also like do stay inside keep yourself safe um you don't get the impression of like like this scheme's coming together or like lady emma knows no. too much you more get like I'm shitting myself, my grandchild's gone missing, and now she's talking about demons and things. She's gonna say to you, who knows the devil's work better than a reverend, if you think you should say this to Lord Northlake, then give him all the information you can spare. All the same, um, I hope that everyone is found well soon. Of course, madam. Forgive me, do you believe, um, is Miss Northlake a, is Miss Northlake's safety a concern at this time? No. If she is not found I, I'm, soon, I'm kind of pushing based on what I've what I've read in her body language yeah. and in her face. Just just kind of 
She she kind of it, there's a little bit of like not only uptightness but like I need to like so she 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 kind of has to reiterate and also like it's her event so she can't she doesn't want to like pretend like doesn't want to acknowledge that anything bad is really happening more than she has to. So she says, I'm sure she'll be found well soon. It's only a matter of time. She's likely checking for something in one of the cupboards or has moved to uh, adjust her dress hem for just a moment. But yeah, she's definitely concerned about it. Yeah, I, I will essentially go, I, you know, indeed, madam, I hope that is the case. Uh, should you need anything from me this evening... I will put myself at your disposal at any time, give a bow, and at that point, move to exit. Um, yeah. Uh, again, with all of the, like, dancing around reputation, kind of going, I understand that this is a party and you don't want anything to seem amiss, and I am going to pretend that there is nothing amiss. Should something become amiss, which seems to be a poten potentiality, know that I will be here and, and like, do the dance of etiquette yeah. to assist is the, the roundabout of what I'm going with here. So, um, Miss Georgiana and Captain Stone, you were intending to speak with Lord Northlake, um, and Miss Emma, you were doing a hunt for Elizabeth. I'm going to uh, regather us all together. I'm going to say that it, took, it takes a beat to, to get a meeting with He's speaking with people, he's busy, he did it, did it, did it, It's going to take you a second to get that done. Um, Alex... Can I get you to make a spot hidden roll? You're going to get information on a yeah. fail. This is for some additional bits and pieces. As you survey the party and look at your missing friend. You know you what? I'm going to pump, pump a bit of luck into that and okay. just make that a success because I really okay. want to find her. You do a pretty comprehensive search of rooms. You speak with the staff to... You, you're not, like, going through, like, back areas where you're not supposed to be. You speak with the staff who aren't there, mm. checking all of them, Everyone is inside the house except for two people. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Northlake is missing and is not in the house. Nice. And the young Mr. George Potterton is also absent. Oh. Now you put those two together. The people that you speak to come to those. You find that information out independently. independently. Yeah. At the moment, you believe you are the only person who has realized everything. Also, everyone's kind of scattered at the moment. Like, the staff are doing their best to get a sense of where everyone is and at speed, but they're, it's going to take them longer to put that together than you did. Uh -huh. um, do I know also anything from my childhood of playing in the house? Do I know anything about, like, any kind of, not, like, like less frequented places, secret, secret little areas... Um, or high, places Elizabeth likes to kind of like to kind of go as a child to. There was never a ton of privacy. Yeah. Well, there was never a ton of privacy in the home to the point that whenever the two of you wanted to speak quietly and with out of out of earshot, you would take a tour of the garden. Yeah. That's you are pretty confident more. she's not in the house. Yep, that is what I'll start to do. Then I'll head back downstairs and start heading towards so, the long corridor and back out the servants corridor and I my goal is to like get back outside then. And as you do that, I'm going to park pretty focused on this I'm gonna point. Say all all yeah. four of you are going to convene yeah. in we'll say the the small parlor not far from the not far from the long corridor. Um you have expressed interest in meeting with Lord North like at the moment he is he is meeting with the the, the staff and, and attending to me. you haven't had a chance to speak privately but you've expressed your desire to Mr. Georgiana and it has been noted. Yeah. Uh, but I'll collect the four of you together in the small parlor where the games of chance have been left idly on the table. No one is currently in here. Someone will come through at some point, unlike in the servants' corridors above, but you have a moment of secrecy where it's just the four of you. I pass it across to each of you. Elizabeth is missing, and so is, is young young Mr. Potterton. Um, Elizabeth is not in the house. I know this house quite well. She's not here and and uh, as I said to the Reverend, there was a family tree in the book, in the Bible. And every 100 years in September, the eldest child dies, and Elizabeth is the eldest child, and she's not in the house. I think she's out in the garden. I. Well, regardless of what any book says, if she is out in the garden, along with the beast who is stalking us, then uh, she, she needs assistance. I, I should like to assemble uh, some lanterns and any other able bodied men who would care to assist me and conduct a search. I'm sure we can we can be given leave to get outside. Lanterns and other men, I don't know. They might want to limit how public the search is for a bit, but we can get out we can get out and start looking. Uh, we'll just have to get word to Northlake or even just to one of the staff to pass on the message that that's what we've done. Why? <laughs> 
Well, it'll take it'll take us two seconds to let them know, and otherwise we could cause more panic. People could start searching for us as well. People won't, so, but people won't be searching for us. We're we're not. I mean, they might be searching for the for, for the capital, though. Maybe not now. I I should like Lord Northlake to know. I would if people also... if people are disappearing, then we we, yes. we don't want people to disappear when they're okay at the minute. Because for now, the only person who's disappeared is in danger. Let's not muddy that exactly. water. Let's rule, rule one of starting a search party is to make sure that the we... people still know that you are starting a search party. Otherwise, people start going missing, one by one. And they don't come. Back. We, we, we don't have time for this right now. <laughs> Michael Campton. Quite right. I, I understand everyone's desire to move at pace however we are still guests in the lord north lakes in the good lord's house the good lord lord north lake um and what we should to say north lake lord yeah. north lake you sorry say so. character go on um um we do not want to risk putting sir james offside for simply we will not be able to get to the root of what is happening without his assistance and his blessing we cannot Don't. do this it is his family and his history and it is it is not for us to to poke our noses into the history of, of other people without their say so it is it is frankly it's rude and we're unlikely to be welcome to do so, and we'll find ourselves with a greater number of obstacles than just a beast in the garden. I understand so I, I that is a risk. Uh, I do not wish to take the risk of a young lady losing her life. And No, but at this stage, we do not pursue. know. I, I understand um, Miss Wentworth, the younger, uh, that you saw that there was something written in the Bible and I was uh, perhaps by chance lucky enough to read it. Uh, and it was from uh, Mr. Alistair Northlake and it appeared to be a confession about spilling blood on some kind of altar to stop beasts. But I do not believe that Miss Elizabeth is necessarily in danger from what is outside I suspect that Miss Elizabeth is more, perhaps not in danger, but is the, may be forced to be the solution to whatever is happening. And I suspect that that is undesirable for more than one party. So, I would like to speak to Lord Northlake to get an understanding of what he knows about the family history, because if it is indeed that Miss Emma, uh, Miss Elizabeth is required to stop such things, then I suspect Sir James is as reticent to, uh, to do anything as we would ourselves. And what if he's not? If he's not, then Miss This Elizabeth has been going on is... for, for, for generations and generations, surely. Look, we, we can cross that bridge when we come to it. I, I think we have a solution here then. Two, two groups. I'll go with the Reverend, we'll speak to Northlake. Ideally, we'll find the information we need, get permission and join the two of you. The two of you grab anything that you think might be useful for us getting outside and searching, lanterns if you can find them, and and, and, and we, we go. Rally out the front, uh, the, 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 the furthest point where we took our tour of the gardens, uh, when we walked as a group, I uh, describe a point like that for us to rally at. And it's out the back through the long corridor rather than I out the front. I think it's out the back. I, yeah, I, 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 the front is going to be. If the mausoleum is out the back, that is where such a beast would take refuge. And that's yeah. that's the side of the house that you you smelled that unusual uh, olfactory phenomenon. At. I think it's the back, the uh, out through the corridor, and the corridor is the one that was getting longer. Which we still haven't really grappled with that, have we? I, I think 
may, may be connected underground is my best bet. But for now, look, let's rally there. Uh, the, the, the closest point that we got to the mausoleum or at the mausoleum itself, if you don't see us there. And uh, I, we'll do what we can in the meantime. Great. Turn heel. March. Uh, the only thing I'll the only thing I'll add just uh, before you all split up is basically just so you understand the kind of the, the state of things and what you can do. Uh, without rolls at the moment, the four of you could walk through the long corridor out the other side and leave undetected. It'll be a small time before anyone realizes you're even missing. This it's kind of in chaos at the moment. Taking Excellent. lanterns and things, someone will undoubtedly spot a spot light filtering through the gardens. There is enough moonlight by which to travel and, and to go, but inspecting things and would the be house hard. would be lit up like a bloody beacon that's yeah. spilling out into the yard too. That's right. So the areas will be limited. Once you start to get out to like the mausoleum, it's gonna be very, very dark. So like hooded land or something might do it. So that's the one thing. You could just kind of dip. The other one is once you mention Elizabeth is not in the house, you are gonna hit the panic button. A little bit like yeah. that's gonna take things to 11 the, captain said so you're probably right they probably will organize search parties and things but it's gonna be a big thing it's gonna but it's gonna turn the sooner we do it the better yes yeah, so that's, that's so it's just decide are you keeping things light touch or heavy touch this is where uh, this is I, I, and, and I'm, I'm i'm leaving the touch up to the people who know how to talk <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna say hey you gonna need some lanterns seen a spare rifle around you okay, could, you could in, probably you could possibly the kitchen, them. right? Yeah. And the laundry outhouse as well. I feel like there would just be a lantern like hung in that area, or either near the back stairs or just inside or just outside the laundry outhouse area, just because that would be convenient. Mm -hmm. A lantern we will be will be pretty easily fetched. A lantern will be pretty easily fetched. Uh, um, like weaponry will be the yeah. weaponry will probably be like pinching something decorative that you can see nearby because like oh hell yeah he would uh, Lord Northag will have dueling pistols a hundred percent I my, uh, my possessions like my possessions include two pistols a rifle and a saber I definitely have the saber you definitely I have the I'd saber have at least one pistol I probably wouldn't have brought my not rifle. to a not to a party a uh, pistol. It's the area, it'd be it's the pretty, area where you have to do all that extra care for weapons and like have power. Right. You it'd be, just score them it'd be a very big thing. I tell you what, Jackson, make a luck roll. Hoping you would say that. And this is just for a pistol, to be clear. Okay. Two pistols. A hell and a half. I, I tell pistols. you what, yes, you can have two pistols in the context of you had loaned them to Lord Northlake to all inspect because right. he was he was planning to purchase some of his own and wanted to compare them to the genuine article to see if these were in fact da 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 they are here awesome. because you'd given them to him previously oh well in that case can i change the two pistols to a rifle to my rifle yep you, you can have one excellent yep, i've got my rifle That's okay cool. uh, you loaned it to him to inspect um and, and in terms of the lightness of the touch, I think that we'll see what happens when the Reverend and I actually get into conversation with Northlook. But my idea is to start off, no, we're not searching for uh, your daughter. It's totally fine. We're, we're just going to check that there is not a wolf prowling the grounds because in a group mm. we're safe and the soldier will be with us. And also you might want to get... Uh, the captain and my sister out of the house for a second so you oh, can all gossip about them. if there's even a chance of a wolf miss wentworth you are not being let outside that house that's no. a good point it would, you, actually, with your you're complexion <laughs> honestly reverend I... you as well pro like it will be like it will be everyone stay inside then we will organize a party in time f again and that's not a list so this is this is you haven't hit the elizabeth panic button that's just there might be yeah. a wolf that was like everyone comes inside we will send some people out to scale the grounds in a large group with dogs captain stone perhaps you could join them you are a military man and your service will be valuable they will be allowed outside everyone else stay inside if you say the elizabeth panic button that might let you go out but then that's like a Everybody's people are freaking, freaking the fuck out yeah. My intention is to talk to Lord Northlake about what his mother said. Yeah. Uh, to um, to intimate or to to mention what his mother said. Um, to say that I like essentially I understand that there have been periods of history in the family that are difficult. That there is clearly a level of concern uh, about his daughter and essentially ask him in like the polite way 
would you, would you be willing to tell me what is going on? I wish to help with as little uh, ruckus and as little anything for this party. Like, I, I yeah. want to do all of this in a way that means that no one other than he, I, and perhaps the three other people that I am, like, with are aware because reputations, families, safety are all deeply important. Um, so I, I'm not trying to hide at all what, what the intention is. I'm genuinely going, sir, what is going on? And please let us help because I care for your family. I care mm -hmm. for Elizabeth. And if there is a situation where you are essentially being coerced into murdering your daughter, I would like to stop that for you because that's messed up. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can that's try my plan. It's It'll definitely be the riskiest conversation you've had so far tonight. In which case, let's uh, a slight review then, because it, there might be possible that we don't get the chance to be permitted to leave for a review party. How about the two of you just go, dip out. Uh, We're dip. Hey, Captain, oh, want to dip? I have, I have dipped. <laughs> Captain's already gone his gun. <laughs> We're dipping. Yeah, they've, they've gone. Okay, and... great. I'm going to try, I'm going to go back to my favorite corridor and see if I can find a way in from the other side. If you get bounced from the conversation, come meet me and we'll try and maybe we can pincer this or something. Wait, but Captain Stone yeah. and Miss Emma are going out through the long corridor too, aren't they? Yes. 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 You'll just stay there for a moment. Oh, uh, I'm, yes. Yeah, so so I, I'm assuming that, it might, well, that I'm not going to easily find like a secret passage and that they'll go yeeting off into the gardens to get to the right. mausoleum proper. But if we can all find a secret passage, then all the better. I don't know. That's pretty great. Yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. you're trying to find a way back into the corridor from the outside should we be ejected from the party? Oh, no. I'm, I'm trying to find a pathway. I'm picturing that there is a tunnel under the, um, under the mausoleum that connects to the house. Mm. And that is what's causing the long corridor. And I'm hoping that I will find behind a painting like a fissure in the wall or something like that. That's what I'm hoping. We'll be able to go down there rather than. You're going back and outside. having a more focus. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, in that case. Reverend Jennings, you're gonna you're gonna remove yourself from the small parlor and close the door behind you to buy your allies a little bit of time and go and find Lord Northlake to have a discussion with him. The other three of you, with Captain Stone's rifle slung across his shoulder and the saber checked, uh, Miss Emma, you will find, you will procure a small hooded lantern and uh, pass it under a petticoat and really uh, help let yourselves all out into the long corridor and close the door behind you again. That chill that you felt is settling in the area it's colder in this room noticeably than the others and that door at the far 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 length of the corridor is still standing open it has definitely lengthened again since you last went inside it miss uh, georgiana uh and uh is now like impossibly long which double the length of the servant's corridor next to it at least as you pace along it um you can feel sort of like almost um uh, like a sense of, a sense of vertigo as you look down at this far point. It feels a little bit as though you are tumbling down a long hole or shaft. Um, as, you're walk as you're walking along, and I'll ask all three of you to make sanity rolls. Cool. That's very fair. So just while we're making this, to be clear, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'll hang here as basically a rally point between our two groups, and I can also do something while I'm here. But um, two of you should run. <laughs> uh, on failure, you're just going to take a point. Uh, Miss Georgiana, you are continuing to be more compelled by the mystery of it all than the sensible than the madness. older sister. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to ask all of you to make spot hidden rolls as you move along this. Yeah, I've been Miss Georgiana, if your intent is to remain here, yeah, sorry, not Reverend. Uh, Miss Georgiana, if your intent is to stay here, you can do yours with a bonus dice. Sure. Um, yeah, I, 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 I want to be the rally between the groups at this point. Yeah, and you're doing so the actual I'm focused in, uh, yeah. inspection. Yep. Uh, success for me. Uh, did you make yours, Jackson? Oh, sorry. What was I looking for? Uh, make spot a spot hidden roll for me, please. Oh, I totally missed that. Yes. yes. All right. Yes. So, um, who got successes? Ah, oh, okay, success two successes Jackson. and one heart. Okay. Correct. Uh, before I continue. <laughs> Would anyone like, yes. would anyone, I have levels for this one, ranging from regular okay. to extreme. If anyone's oh. interested in purchasing uh, uh, <laughs> a, a VIP pass, 
I, I, I think I think I'd like to purchase a VIP pass. Would you like I'll to purchase pop a mine video? to a heart. I'm pretty close to a heart. Okay. You're gonna go for uh, a heart. I might purchase an extreme unless you would like to. I think yours are probably gonna be better spent on combat rolls. How about yeah. I buy the extreme? And yours is cheaper. You can get it for seven. Alright, I'll go. With that then, Alex, Alex, down. you probably don't need to do the, the hard because you're okay. gonna you're now covering the gambit of okay. them. Um uh Captain Stone. Uh, sorry, so first of all, on the success, uh Miss Wentworth. This is long, it goes all the way towards the back, and as you get to the uh, doorway, you can see that when it was open, the hinges were busted. Uh, oh, no, the hinges, sorry, the, uh, the, the, not the lock, like the latch was, it was not opened, it was broken open, and you can see what looked like, uh, they're hard to spot and identify, because it just looks like it was, like, you could trick yourself into thinking it was kicked open, you think you can see claw marks where it was, oh, where it was, okay. uh, where it was pushed through. On a hard success, Captain Stone, as you're walking along here, at first you think there's, you keep on thinking, you had experiences in in, in the like the war theater where uh, you thought, or you were you identified like people out there in your peripheral, like threats, and you would swing around to, to spot them. And it was very much a safety thing. You keep on having that trigger. You keep on having like, there's someone just behind me and sort of whirling around, or like fighting the urge to, or there's someone just in the corner of my vision. It happens particularly when you walk right through the center of the corridor and as you get towards the other side it's beginning to diminish again but it's really unnerving and it fully like it puts you on edge as you get to the doorway on the hard success what you're also going to notice is that long ago there was a um a like latch that would have been installed in the door that has since been removed and painted over in one of the in one of the renovations. And I'm just gonna double check my notes on which side it is. And I believe to let it's you know, actually. Dave, I have purchased the extreme, so yeah. you can proceed accordingly. Noted, thank you. Um here it is. Uh yeah, they had it had a lock and bolts installed at the top and bottom, uh, and it's on the exterior, which would be very non-standard because that so would be again, locking a, something from getting out of the house rather than door. in. Oh, so the door to the exterior, the long corridor. Yes, yeah, so the one that leads out to the garden. Yeah, the there was at one point uh, bolts gotcha. installed at the top and bottom of it so that it could be closed from the outside, preventing people from gotcha. leaving. Uh, they have since That's been removed, painted good. over, and this would have happened years ago. Years, years, years. Very subtle. Interesting. Um, as the two of you, you all notice this. Georgiana, yours is going to take you a beat because you are here on... Actually, you know what? It's pretty good timing for all this. I think you are. As as you get to the other side and Miss Emma, you're like getting the, the lantern out from un underneath you're peering out into the darkness um captain stone you're tracing your hand along the uh the the bolts on the outside of where they once were and reverend jennings you're just seeking out lord northlake to have a discussion with him uh georgiana you feel the same thing that captain stone felt as you walk through the center of the corridor that feeling of like there's something on the edge of your vision it keeps on flickering in and out it's not necessarily a hostile or something it's a glint of light of willow wisps and things filter in for a moment and then suddenly you pause with one leg still aloft almost like you're playing hopscotch like you did when you were a kid holding perfectly still and not twisting your head because at this exact angle for just a moment out of the corner of your vision like a a, a moving image or one of those magic eyes you can make out a crack in the doorway through which an ethereal cold blue light is filtering out. And as you carefully balance and twist your hand towards it, you found a crack through this dimension into another. I've got to go in. <laughs> and holding that thing, you can begin to try and tip yourself towards it and move into that vanishing seam between worlds. And I think given it's 12.08, that's where we're going to park this session to pick up next time. What? Hell you yeah. What? <laughs> Just a little, a little in between. What's up with that? All right.
Fantastic. Is the, is the in between worse than the upside down? <laughs> oh look, I don't, get inside and get inside and see how you like it. Yeah, I, I doubt it's going to be excellent. Okay. I'm gonna hate it. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna fully suck. Um, all right, fantastic. Well, thank you everyone for joining, and thank you to my four players for playing. Um, thank you, Dave. Thank, thank you. Thank you for keeping. Uh, we will park our session here, but uh, fret not. Uh, we will return next week at the same time at the same place to continue the long uh, corridor. Uh, now, <laughs> now you have to add a space between two of the O's. Oh, yeah, and a little uh, crack. I'll be honest, uh, I didn't do the O's uh, last time either. So maybe, I, like, I, 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 maybe, maybe add like three O's for the regular corridor, and then like one kind of messed up. Like or, a different, like one of those, like yeah, like, a, like the, the, the Zalgo text, text yeah, or yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Start describing what the other dimension is in superscript or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyone can just translate just wing dings. An umlaut. Umlaut. You go. Uh, it was it very silly uh, from Dylan Morin? It's like talking about a restaurant called Umlaut. Well, it isn't called Umlaut. It's just two dots over an O that isn't there. Um, and I feel like that would be Good. quite on brand. Two dots over an O that isn't there for us would be quite <laughs> <bad>. <laughs> All right. Terrific. Um, we will uh, hopefully we'll see you all next week. And uh, yeah, catch you soon.